this is Price Boss. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to bring custom comps into Price Boss. We've already shown you how you scrape Zillow comps, scrape uh, Landwatch comps, scrape Craigslist comps. But sometimes you, there, are, there are other sources of comps that you want to bring in. You've got your own sources. Or perhaps we want to use another site like Redfin. If you can find data on Redfin, it's a great resource because Redfin is quite a bit like Zillow, but it has some capabilities that Zillow doesn't have, which makes it really attractive. Um, so we shall move over into scraping custom data. Let's get to it. So this is Price Boss, and this is the Custom Comps tab. Notice it looks a little different than the others because it doesn't have a place for you to copy and paste data into. You would either bring data in manually and just add it into these columns manually, or sometimes you can find data, um, or you have data on a spreadsheet and you can copy and paste it in, or you can get it onto a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna show you today how to get data from Redfin, which would be another, re another great source if it's available. Um, so I'm going to type to uh, Redfin, and it's, it's, it's a lot like Zillow. Uh, it looks a lot like Zillow, especially when you pull the, the comps, but it's not everywhere. Zillow has, is a much uh, wider range than, uh, than Redfin does. Redfin tends to only be in larger metropolitan markets. But let's go ahead and see if we can get Clickitat County. Sure enough, we can, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my filters to the, just the data that I want. So I'm in Click Attack County. I'm going to set no minimum price. And on the max, I'm going to put 50,000, which is consistent with the other searches that we've done. And I just want land. And I'm going to say I just want sold data. And I can say I want last three months, six months, a year, two years. For now, I'm just going to go with the last three months. That should be enough. And it's, that's going to give, should give me 19 properties. So let's apply the filters, and there it is. And notice it gives me these boxes on the right, which if you recall, looks quite a bit like Zillow. Um, but the big difference is, and I could scrape up in the same way that I do Zillow, but I don't need to because I can do better than that. With, with Redfin, they allow us to download the data to a CSV or an Excel sheet, which is a much more powerful than just scraping it. So I'm just going to click on the download button and I'm going to open up the CSV that's created, which shows up on my other screen. So I'm going to bring it across. And now I'm going to come back to Price Boss because I want to see the columns. I need to get this data to look like this in these columns. So I can immediately see that there's a lot of data in here that I don't need, like the sale type past sale. Um, I don't need that right now. So I'm just going to put source. And in this case, it's going to be Redfin. And, and next, I'm going to put type. And I don't need the date. I know that these were all pulled from the last three months. And I'm going to put sold because it's sold data. And next, I'm going to need subdivision. So I'm going to insert a column here for subdivision. Now, if I look across, this is vacant land. I don't really need that. I've got some address information. I've got the price. I'm going to need that. But over here, I've got location information. This is uh, about as close as we get to subdivision data in uh, Redfin. And in a lot of cases, it is subdivision data. So I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to change the name from location to subdivision. Sure I spell that right. All right, next I'm going to need price. So I'm going to insert another column here. And I've got the price right here. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in. There's my price. Uh, next, I've got square feet and acres. So um, what we can see here is that it says lot size. Redfin tends to give you the lot size regardless in square feet. So I'm gonna actually need both. So I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna insert two columns. And one, is, so first I'm gonna put uh, this one, which is lot size. And I'm gonna change that to square, the header to square feet. And I'm gonna call this header acres. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a formula to convert square feet into acres. And that formula is I'm going to put equal sign, which tells Excel that I want to do a formula. And I'm going to select the cell, which represents the square feet. And I'm going to divide it by 43,560. And that's how we convert square feet into acres. So I can see that this is five acres. But the beautiful thing is that it's not saying 21,000 or 217,800 divided by 43,560. It's saying E2 divided by that. And that makes it easy because now I can just take I can, where this little box is, this little square at the bottom of the cell. I can get my crosshairs into it and just pull it down. And it will calculate the acreage for all of these. Because right here, I've got E2 which is this divided by 43,560. Down here, I've got E20, representing this number divided by 43,560. So I can just do it once and pull it down with the formula that makes my life a lot easier. Now I wanna get all of this into two digits. So notice up here, I've got these two icons, uh, and these increase or decrease the number of, of decimals. So because I have some that have no decimals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it. And you see it just brings it all down to one decimal. And I'm going to click it one more time to get two decimals. And that's how I want it to look. So now I've got everything up through acres. The next thing I want is property address. Well, notice I don't actually need this because this just says it's vacant land. I'm going to create a little more space here. So notice I've got what's essentially the street address, and then in another, another column, I've got the city, in another column, I've got the state, in another column, I've got the zip. I actually just want it all together as one address. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Call it address, and the way you do that, again, it's a formula, so I'm gonna start with an equal sign, and I just wanna reference the street address, which is, so I just click right here, which is H2, and then in order to add more data or, or more pieces to this puzzle, I'm going to use what's called the ampersand, which is shift uh, seven. And that's like an at sign, like in the AT&T logo. And now after the street address, I want to put a comma. So I'm going to put quotation, comma, space, because I'll need a space after the comma, and then another quotation. And now I want to add the next piece. So I'm going to add another ampersand and we'll put in the city and another ampersand so between each section I need one of these ampersands and now I'm going to put another quotation comma space or quotation and then another ampersand and I'm going to put the state and then I'm going to put an ampersand and a quotation a space and a quotation so I just want a space here and another ampersand and the zip code so all I'm doing is I'm putting uh, the reference to the street address, ampersand with a comma space, ampersand with the city, ampersand with comma space, ampersand state, ampersand space, and then ampersand zip code. And if I hit enter now, I can see that I've got the whole address all in one line and it looks exactly perfect, fantastic. And because it's a formula referencing these numbers in this row, I can just now drag it down and I've done all of them. So there are all of my addresses. Now, if I come back here, it also asks for lat long. Now I could calculate that from within this spreadsheet, but I don't really have to because I can see that with Redfin, they already provide it, lat and long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two, insert two more rows. And now I'm just gonna copy these two columns and insert them over here, I'll paste. And I'm just gonna insert one more column just to separate. This is sort of the extra information. This is the information that I need to bring over into, my, into the price boss. Now all this data is ready to go. I don't need the header information. I've already got headers over here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this bottom right uh, cell. I'm gonna hold down my left button on my mouse and I'm going to drag it up all the way to the top excluding the header row and I'm going to copy I like to use control C or a command C if you're on a Mac 
and then I'm going to come over to Price Boss, and I'm going to highlight the first available row. I'm not going to just paste it. I'm going to I click the right button on my mouse, and I come down to Paste Special and Paste Values. By doing this, I'm not actually copying any formulas. I'm just copying the result of formulas. I'm getting the actual actual information as it appears on the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to click it, and there we go. Now, there is something I did forget to do. I would normally would do it in the spreadsheet, but I'll do it here. It's just as well. So I'm going to select this subdivision column because you, you can see that there's formatting here that I really I don't really understand. I don't really like it. So what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of this click attach CO because that's extra information that I don't need. Um, I just need subdivision information. So I'm going to click Edit, Find and Replace, and I'm going to find um, click attach CO colon space, and I'm going to replace it with nothing. And I just want to do it on this sheet. Yeah, just on this sheet. And I'm just going to, and I'm going to match the case because I want to make sure I just get the right ones. And I'm going to replace all of it. And you see it just got rid of all of that. And now I can see I've got some other information I want to get rid of. And I can do a lot of them all at once with this method. So I'm going to use find and replace. And I'm going to get rid of Centerville. And I'm just going to keep Golden Goldendale. Again, I'm going to go to just this sheet, match case, and replace all, and it's gone. And now I'm going to do the same thing with Glenwood, which is right down there. I just want to keep the Trout Lake. Replace all. And I'm just going to keep Lyle. I'm going to get rid of High Prairie. High Prairie. And now my subdivision data looks good. That's what I want it to look like. And we're done. We've just added uh, all this data. And I can see I've got 19 records now that I've added to my analysis. So I'm going to have quite a bit of data once I put this all together. Oh, a couple things I did miss here. Um, I want the source always to be Redfin and the type always to be sold. So I'm just going to highlight these two cells. I could have done this over in the spreadsheet as well. I just forgot. But I, it's okay. I can do it here. I'm just going to bring it down and drag it down. And now I've got it Redfin, the type is sold, these are the subdivisions, the price, the acreage, property address, Latin long. That's what I want in this sheet. I'm good to go. So we've now uh, got all of the data we need and the next step is to be is to analyze data. Good luck.